and our help comes from the Lord. Can you say amen, somebody in the house? All right. So, so it's an issue of responsibility. Because of the responsibility on our lives, we need to be closer to God than anybody else. We're not saying that ladies should not be close to God, but we must be more. That's what one of the panelists said. I see, guy. So, 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 I read, I'm coming to my scripture. I read a, a magazine, a Christian magazine about three years ago. It was Father's Day edition of that Christian magazine. It's a Nigerian Christian magazine. And I know the publisher. So, he decided to interview ladies so that he can put them in his magazine for Father's Day. And his interview question was, it's like a, it's the same question for all the ladies. Will you, and these were single ladies. They were not married, but they were grown, you know, like, you know, not, they were above 18. And he asked them, he asked about 40 to 50 ladies. Will you like to marry a man like your dad? That was the question. Hey, I read eh, my ears full. I, after, I read, after a while, I pushed the magazine away. It was too depressing. 99% of the ladies said, no, a big fat no. And they said the reasons why. Say, I would, may God never, some of them said, may God never allow me to meet a man to marry who is like my father. I will never, some of them will say, the nicest one said, my father was okay with giving money and with the house, but, but for a marriage partner, I would never want to marry a person like my father. And then I now tabulated and collated what exactly was the, um, the common denominator among all these ladies. And 85% of them said, because my father was sexually immoral. So I'm going to be dealing along those lines this evening. Said, because that's basically it. Basically it. Said, the money he provided didn't make any sense because it was unfaithful to my mother. He married, some of them said he even brought the, some of the women to the house. Some of them said he even allowed some of the women to be getting my mom's phone number and be abusing my mother and telling my mother they are coming to kick her out. I was so depressed. I said, have men become this? This? I don't know what to say. But Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. <laughs> I said Jesus is the answer. And Jesus and his word are one. So the word of God is the answer. I remember another reason why I'm going to be saying a few things I said tonight happened two days ago. I had somebody on my Facebook timeline. This was from the US. You would even think that people who are like in developed countries, things are better. <laughs> it's a global issue. They said, if you have a million dollars and you are to give it to your dad and to your mom, how will you share it? Hey! Hey! Oh, I noticed what all the ladies said, especially. Some of them said, I will share it, 700,000 to my mom, 300,000 to my dad. Some of them said, I will share 1 million to my mom, 0 dollars to my dad. Some, I, I, I read about 25, none of them said, only one person said, I will give $500,000 to my dad, $500,000 to my mom. All the others said, most of the money, they will, all, all the money, they will give to their mothers. <laughs> uh, yeah. so, see, so some of us who are already fathers you think these children are not watching and I just said but well, why why so there's a problem there is a lack of 
mighty men in the land. Real, genuine, mighty men in the land. But I thank God for this weekend. That is going to change in Jesus' name. You are with me, say amen. I said from this weekend, that is going to change in Jesus' mighty name. So if you're already married, you have children. Think about your life. What if when we are very old and our children each have one, one million, how would they distribute it? Based on my performance, my behavior. Some of them said, my father was not emotionally available to us. Hosu, 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 you know? That's what one of the panelists was talking about. I don't know who was saying that. You hosu, hosu, you don't balance things. Hosu, hosu, always working, always do the other. He was never available. He didn't play with us. We don't know him play with us. He didn't take us. So, so hey, that's what I needed growing up. So, I, if he's a free one, one million dollars, my mom gets all the one million dollars. Amen. Praise God. Ladies, are you happy with that kind of um, statistics? That you get all the one million dollars? No, we are going to, we are going, I'm going to teach some things tonight. We are going to challenge you guys. We will do better. Amen. Men, we are going to step up. Amen. We are going to do better in Jesus' mighty name. Look at a neighbor, look at a man next to you, another man. Give them a fist bomb and tell them you are a mighty man. Say, we are going to behave like mighty men. Do you know that you can be a mighty man and you may not know it? Quickly go to the book of Judges. I want to deal with about three or four men in the Bible and teach us a few things and then we'll be getting ready to pray and close here. But Judges chapter 6, everybody. Once you are a child of God, the way God sees you and the way sometimes you see yourself may be different. May be different. So I want to talk to somebody. It doesn't matter as a guy what your background was. Sometimes I look at people and I'm trying to get them to have vision. I see some people and they are struggling because they've never seen another pattern of a man, of a man that is mighty, a man that is a real man, excellent man. They've never seen it growing up until they come into church, until they come into the house of the Lord. So but I've met some people, until they come into a church like this, they, 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 they never know. They, they, they never know that you don't pick, lift your hand and beat a woman. They don't know those things. They don't know that you don't, that they don't know that you provide. They don't know that when you, when, you, when, you, when you exchange vows, you keep to the vows even if you die in the process of keeping to the vow. They don't know, they don't know that that's how it needs to, how to be men. And many a times, the internal picture and the vision and the image you have on your inside is what you leave on the outside. Here is a story of a man called Gideon. Let's look at Gideon quickly. The first man we're going to be looking at. Judges chapter 6, verses 11, 12, and 14. Pay attention to this. The Midianites were the enemies of God's people. God's people had sinned, and therefore, they were being terrorized and occupied by an enemy army, the Midianites. God's people. Gideon and his people were God's people. And they were being oppressed, harassed, killed, chased all over the place. And the Bible says, uh, at that point, they had been crying out to the Lord. So God decided to do something. And then he decided to go looking for a man called Gideon. But let's look at the story. Let's pick it up from verse 11. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak tree, which was an opera that pertained unto Joash the Abiezerite. Joash, that's the father. And his son, Gideon. So Gideon's father's name was Joash. Alright. And his son, Gideon, threshed wheat by the wine press. He was trying to get wheat. He was trying to get food um, but look at how he did it to hide it from the Midianites he was scared he was afraid he was terrified he was in hiding he was doing it quietly so that the Midianites could not say who is with there who's there? what's happening there now those a man hiding like that those are not the signs and the behaviors of a person who knows i am mighty i am strong i can i can beat and destroy anybody no he was hiding he knew he felt that the, his attitude was that the midianites were stronger than he so they were mightier than he and that was why he was in a hiding verse 12 and the angel of the lord 
appeared unto Gideon and said unto Gideon, The Lord is with you, you weakling of a man hiding from the Midianites. Yes or no? Let me try again. The angel of the Lord appeared unto Gideon and said unto Gideon, The Lord is with you. You scared stiff less than a man. To be oppressed, hiding and getting your food, running away from me. Was that what the angel said? What did the angel say? The Lord is with thee. What? You what? Can you say it with me? You what? Mighty man of valor. Mighty man of conquest. Mighty man who is a champion. I'm sure he might have been startled because he saw the angel. But he must have been startled because of what the angel said. The choice of the angel's um, uh, uh, description. I'm sure he must have been saying, ah, who is he talking about? Who? And then he said, he's the only one there. And I'm sure he would have looked at the angel and said, do you know, do you understand what I'm doing here? Do mighty people run away? Do they run into hiding? Running from the enemies? Running from the Midianites? And trying to look for small food because of desperation? But, the message the angel gave was right. The thought and the impression and the image of himself that Gideon had was wrong. That image and impression that made him think it was inferior to the Midianites, that made him feel it was weaker than the Midianites, that made him feel that he had to be hiding from the Midianites or else they will catch him and at best take him off as a slave, was wrong as far as the God who sent the angel was. I don't know if you understand my thinking.